Do you know the name of the bomb that produced the most powerful explosion ever? Uh, probably not. Uh, in Russian, it's a Tassar Bomba. In Russian, means king of bombs. So Soviet uh, summoned nuclear bomb that was tested over uh, Norveza. I tried to pronounce right. Uh, Zembla. Uh, island in the Arctic Ocean on October 30, 1961. So Serbian, an uninhabited village, like 55 kilometers from ground zero, was leveled. And buildings more than 160, 160 kilometers away um, were damaged, were brutally damaged. In addition, it was estimated that the heat from the blast would have caused third degree burns up to 100 kilometer distant. So it's a quite a powerful bomb, right? So some nuclear bombs are immeasurably destructive. And just imagine the same bomb was, you know, was, you know, exploding the, the place where, you know, habited the place. But there is something more destructive than this. What is that? It is a human mind. Um, just the selfishness and indifference uh, could, could, could kill more people than some nuclear bombs. Um, I think about starvation. Every year, around 9 million, what did I say? I, 9 million people die of hunger, even though the world has more than enough food to feed the whole of humanity. It's sad. It would shock you more if, if you compare this number with the COVID-related deaths. So coronavirus death toll was 2,371,678 uh, on February 11, 2021. Um, so the world has been suffering from many different things, but it suffers, suffers most um, from the lovelessness or distorted love. That's why Paul warned, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Let's read it together. But know this, that in the last days, what, what kind of time? Perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, uh, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having form of godliness but denying its power. So as I said, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Uh, I look at some, I googled some information, but there are many different traditions and legends uh, about this day. But no matter what, um, it is pronoun uh, for the expression of love. Probably you agree with that. So as I was praying for today's sermon, the Holy Spirit led me to reflect on the true love that uh, was ex that exists on earth before sin entered and marred everything. So when we practice this true love in our relationships, we can bring more heat to this cold world. Okay, this week we have studied Genesis 1 to 6. I'm sure you have studied and blessed. And next week, well, we'll be until uh, 12. So Genesis chapter 1 to 11 has a lot of history. Um, a lot of big history of mankind. So foundation of your life you know, would depend on how you understand uh, those chapters. So I hope you prayerfully study, um, study them 
that you may have right foundation in your life. And if foundation is shaking, then everything will be shaken. And I, I like how the first book of the Bible begins. How does it uh, begin? Let's see. Um, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. So everything began from nothing. I like that. You know, everything was fresh and everything was new. I like this freshness. No hurdles, no hindrances, just freshly take the first step. This is a prerequisite before you start any love relationship. Okay, so nothing in the past um, you know, should remain as a hurdles as you begin any kind of relationship. So it is the same, also same, when you love Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, John uh, 3 verse 3, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, one, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. To tell the truth, it's the only way to clear your past. So your sins must be forgiven, right? All guilt must be washed away. You should overcome all bad memories. The odd characters must be corrected. All hatred must turn to love. But we know that man's willpower cannot do those things. But we also know that with God, all things are possible. So you may have problems in your love relationships, um, possibly because you still carry hurdles or hindrances from your past. Now, most people don't think this way, um, but Genesis chapter 1 is a love chapter. If you agree with me, please raise your hand. Mm, but not many of you, none of you, uh, it's okay, um, but it's a love chapter. Um, at least for me, I can find thousands of thousands of love from it. And, and this is one of the chapters that makes me cry with joy and thanks. How many of you cried when you read Genesis chapter 1? Let me see your hand. Hmm, none. Okay, so after today's sermon, you may try, you know, uh, that, this, this beautiful love chapter. You know, the love of God is embedded in every word. See how the Father, you know, the, like, um, you know, Galaluka and those who recently became Father, with the, the Father's mind, read Genesis chapter 1 again. You can see the Father's mind there, how He prepared everything for Adam and Eve. It's, it's so beautiful. Every word contains uh, the love of God. And the least changed one since Adam and Eve's fall is nature. Probably you agree with that, right? It still speaks God's love to us. Um, there is one thing that you cannot avoid seeing in Winnipeg during the winter time. What is it? What is it? Snow everywhere. Um, you know that every snowflake is unique. Uh, God does not duplicate His design. So, how about we think this way? You know, every snowflake is God's different way of saying, I love you, my child. You know, 
just after the sermon, you look out the window, or if you're brave enough, you know, go out of your house and see the snow and that piled up, and, and that every snowflake is thinking that it's the God's way of saying, I love you, my child. You know, it's beautiful. I believe God has enough vocabulary treasures uh, to do it. You know, after engraving His love everywhere on us, He made Adam. Um, he made other living creatures, male and female, at the same time. But when He made a woman for Adam, He chose a different way. So what did God use and how did He make her? So any, any kids, any kids can answer for my question. You can turn your, you can unmute yourself and tell me how and what with one material and how did God make Eve? Any kids brave enough to say it? All right, please. God took from Adam. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so, um, he used Adam's rib, right? So, Eve was a creature who was made with the most sophisticated material than all others. Mm. Um, God used the soil to make every living creature, you know, that breed. But he used Adam's rib to make Eve. Um, anyway, enough talking about the material. So let's see how God made Eve. It's Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to um, 22. Okay, let's read it together. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up uh, the flesh in its place. Verse 22, Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from a man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Um, I often like to uh, interpret it this way. God made Adam, right? And he divided him into two, Adam and Eve. So Adam was born again as God made Eve out of him as a new creature who needed Eve to be a complete being again. Okay, so when God introduced Eve to Adam, he recited a poem, which was the first poem that ever composed. So Genesis 2, 23, it says, this is now born of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. So then um, verse 24 begins with the word, therefore. What does therefore mean? It means as a result of something that has just been mentioned. So, after saying, therefore, um, and the verse continues. Therefore, and continues, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So, therefore, what? What, what did say, what did God, the Bible say before say therefore? It means they were in the same body. Adam and Eve were in the same body. So be joined and become one flesh again. So that's the message. The following verse, verse 25, tells us evidence of Adam and Eve becoming one flesh. So Genesis 2, uh, verse 25, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So I did some Hebrew word study about ashamed 
uh, is uh, like bush. It's uh, it pronounced like a bush. Um, first, Adam and Eve uh, didn't do anything shameful. Yeah. So if you have been doing anything shameful, stop it today. You know. Um, whether you know your partner knows about it or you know does not know about it, but if for any chance if you have been doing something shameful, you stop it today. The Holy Spirit give you power to stop it, and I believe that it would be the best Valentine's Day gift ever. Right. So if you have been doing anything. To shame, shameful, to be shameful. You can stop it today by the help of the Holy Spirit. A bush uh, can be also translated as be dried. Um, how many of you like dried flowers? I know some people like dried flowers too. Um, but no one would like their relationships to become like dried flowers. Dried flowers? So what happens uh, to the dried flowers? If you just keep, continue to keep it, it will be continue to be dried. Nothing will be changed but get drier and drier and then eventually you have thrown into a garbage can. So what would it be like if relationships are dried? It is like mundane and boring. They exist together in the same, at the same place for the sake of being together. That's so sad. To maintain healthy relationships, you need to bring some freshness from time to time. Do you agree with that? So your, your intentional effort will revitalize your relationships. Um, you may think, um, oh, not for me. So if you don't want to do it, a man from Hong Kong would inspire you. And I recently read an article about a man in Hong Kong. Um, he fell in love with a doll and engaged with it. So he invited his friends and family members to that event. What a weird, right? So he said when he had an interview with the local media, he said that I had human girlfriends earlier, but I am attracted to mochi, which is doll, now. I am annoyed with the human girlfriends who use phones when they are with me. Mochi is different. I can spend quality time with Mochi without any deviations. So if you do not want to put any freshness into your relationships, I don't recommend this though. But don't follow this Hong Kong guy. So if you like to maintain human relationships, you don't want to have relationship like dried flowers. Okay? But flowers in the, in the garden with enough sunshine and water and nutrition so that in seasons it will blossom beautiful flowers. You got that, right? So bush can also be translated disappoint. So according to Longman Dictionary, disappoint means to make someone feel unhappy because something they hoped for did not happen or was not as good as they expected. So, um, in order to not to disappoint your partner, you need to know your partner's expectations. In order to know your partner's expectations, you have to spend time you know, with your partner and you have to care about the partner, right? Then you may know the expectation. After that, you need to work diligently to meet them. 
We know that nothing comes from nothing and nothing can be maintained without intentional effort. So you would like to, uh, you don't want to disappoint your partner, right? So spend time to know your partner's expectation and when you know it, try your best uh, to fulfill, not to disappoint your partner. Next one, bush can be also translated embarrassed. Uh, making anyone to be embarrassed isn't good. We know that, right? Um, it can be more serious in love relationships. So couples need to learn to respect. You know, um, you know when I when I give like a pre-marriage counseling, I always mention that um, somehow it's easier to say I love you than I respect you. But if you don't earn your uh, partner's respect, um, you know, love relationship can be um, dangerous. Okay, um, but. The basically, uh, we can think about it this way. God made you with His own image and likeness, and you like that, right? And also, He made you um, with uh, the unique creativity and beauty. Um, but you should remember that He made everyone else the same way. So that's why we should respect every person's dignity as a human being. Not only your partner and in love relationships. So the mostly I talk about love um, in a focus on couples. But love is not only important subject between you know, husband and wife. Now, the same principles should be applied to everyone. So Jesus said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, it, you know if you read this verse carefully, uh, it talks about the love of Genesis. We read in Genesis chapter 2. As yourself means, uh, you know that everyone comes from Adam. Right? We are all Adam's descendants, which means we share the same blood and we share the same flesh. So what Adam said to Eve on his first encounter with her, Genesis 2, 23, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. It is true to everyone. I hope you got that message. Right? Since we are all from Adam, we, we share the same blood, same flesh. So not only Eve, but everyone who comes from Adam, we, we are one. So whether we love them, and you know, hate, or ignore, whether we respect or embarrass them, Everyone we see around, they are our flesh. I, I really hope you get the message. So based on this logic, you know, that's why they say, ne ne love your neighbor as yourself, because the same flesh, your flesh. So based on this logic, you can say that everything we do to others, it will affect us the same way. Why? Because we are the same flesh. You know, that's why when you hate someone, the same hatred will affect you. Why? Because we are same flesh. Now, snow is everywhere in Winnipeg, in winter time. But now we can make love everywhere, in everyone in Winnipeg by the power of Jesus' love. Amen? So let's begin with the people around us and love them as our own flesh, as Jesus commanded. 
And now I like to finish the sermon with an invitation. Jesus is coming soon, very soon. And let's receive Him together. Hallelujah. Amen.